Good morning, everyone. It's Friday, May 22nd. I'm Stephanie Haney. This is your 3 News Now early update with our top headlines from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. It's a beautiful day outside. We are looking at a long holiday weekend. If you're back to work with Memorial Day on Monday, and it's a great day to have a good day. Before we get into the top headlines, we will give you the numbers from the latest Ohio Department of Health report that came out yesterday at 2 p.m. so we can let you know where we're standing in terms of how COVID-19 is looking here in the state of Ohio as we head into the weekend. Now, these are the numbers from Thursday at 2 p.m. because that's when we get those numbers from the Ohio Department of Health. So yesterday when we got those new numbers, new cases were way up, but deaths were down. So here's where we stand right now. There are now a total of 30,167 confirmed cases and probable cases of COVID-19 here in the state of Ohio. That's based on that expanded CDC definition that includes positive cases as well as probable cases. So yesterday we saw 731 new cases of COVID-19 reported, and that is the largest 24-hour spike we've seen since May 8th. 731 new cases. That's up from 484 new cases on Wednesday, and yesterday we saw the number of cases break the 30,000 point. So here in Ohio, we have had a total of 30,167 COVID-19 cases. That's since we became aware of it in March 9th. That was the first reported case here in Ohio. We do know, based on antibody testing, that Dr. Amy Acton has told us that it has been present here in Ohio since at least January. But those are the reported cases that we know about. The total number of deaths now in the state of Ohio is at 1,836. That's 55 new deaths reported yesterday, which is down from a couple of days of pretty high numbers. We had 61 new deaths reported on Wednesday, 63 new deaths reported on Tuesday. That was up from 32 new deaths reported on Monday. So the number of new deaths yesterday down from those previous two days. In terms of the number of people hospitalized so far, 5,295 people total of those confirmed cases have been hospitalized. So that's about one-sixth of the cases resulting in hospitalization. Yesterday, we saw 97 new hospitalizations reported, and yesterday there were 892 total people hospitalized right now. So about a fifth of the people who have been hospitalized currently hospitalized right now. In terms of ICU admissions, we have now had a total of 1,397 ICU admissions. There were 28 new ICU admissions reported yesterday with 349 people actively in the ICU. So of the people who are hospitalized, 349 currently in the ICU out of 892. Now, as we look at the weekend yesterday, in-room dining was allowed to reopen. And many places did opt to do that, but many places opted not to do that as well. So the question has come up of whether people have the right to refuse to wear a mask if they're required to do so by a business. Here's how that breaks down. It's not any different from when there is a no shoes, no shirt, no service policy at a restaurant. You can now add no mask onto that if you want to, and that restaurant or establishment does not have to serve you or allow you into that entity. They just can't do it in a discriminatory manner. That's what you need to remember. So if you choose not to wear a mask, you have that right, but you also have to abide by other people's choices to require a mask in their private establishment. So do keep that in mind as you are out and about this Memorial Day weekend, if that's something that you're thinking about doing. Yesterday, Governor Mike DeWine announced that skills training for all Ohio high school athletic sports, that's including contact sports, will be allowed to begin on May 26th. This is the same day that fitness facilities are allowed to reopen, although there was a judge ruling this week that said that fitness facilities do not have to wait until May 26th to reopen without penalty. However, the date that is currently set is May 26th for the opening of those facilities. So this includes sports like football and basketball, which will be allowed to resume their training. So that includes weight training, agility training, and conditioning. That's all starting May 26th. That also includes the same day that bowling alleys, miniature golf centers, and batting cages will be able to reopen. Now, while these teams are allowed to train, things like tournaments, games, and competitions, and scrimmages for contact sports are still not permitted 
The governor's office has not yet made a decision on when those competitions will be able to begin again. But once that information is available, of course, we'll be sharing that with you on WKYC.com and our WKYC app, as well as on the air on all of our TV shows. Now, once we have the guidelines for safety protocols for contact sports, those will be published on the Responsible Restart Ohio page, and then we will also share those on WKYC.com. Here's something that a lot of people are taking an interest in, and as people do return to work, as many states do slowly start this reopening process, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have released new guidelines for reopening schools and restaurants. So it's a 60-page document with detailed guidance on reopening schools, child care centers, restaurants and bars, and also mass transit. So under these guidelines, it's a lot similar to some of the things we've already been seeing President Donald Trump's administration has been talking about a three-phase approach. We've been talking about a three-phase approach here in Ohio. The CDC has also outlined a three-phase approach. And in the first phase, that includes things like restaurants and bars only offering drive-through delivery or curbside pickup, prioritizing outdoor seating, keeping those physical guidelines, physical distancing guidelines in place, also avoiding shared objects like menus, dishes, utensils, payment systems, lots of places now going to contactless payment and single use items or touch less symptoms or systems. And the fact that non-essential trips should initially be canceled before travel in accordance with state, state and local regulations. And then of course, employees who are higher risk being encouraged to continue to work from home until a third phase when customer and and uh, interaction can then be phased back in. But here's probably the thing that might be at the top of mind for a lot of parents, childcare. So the CDC has recommended that there be school and childcare programs for uh, children of essential workers. Initially, camps and childcare programs should be only for the children of essential workers. That's according to the CDC guidelines that have been released. They also recommend limiting sharing and they don't want people to mix the groups of children to keep people from being exposed to many more individuals. And that includes closing common spaces and canceling large events when it comes to childcare, day camps, those kinds of things. The guidelines would also suggest that teachers or care providers wear masks and that the students or the youth in their care wear masks when possible and also suggesting completely shutting down cafeterias and instead having students just eat in their classroom. So really keeping that experience contained to the room in which the children are in and not necessarily expanding that to the group setting of a cafeteria or those kinds of things. We have more details on that on WKYC.com and our WKYC app. Now there's a new study out about what are the safest cities in the state of Ohio. This is according to a new survey released by safewise.com. And according to that survey, they ranked 167 cities in the state of Ohio, and Broadview Heights came in number one. Congratulations to you, Broadview Heights. If you live in Broadview Heights, apparently you've picked a great place to live. So the study ranked this the cities based on data surrounding violent crimes and property crimes. So this is based on crime reports that were sent to the FBI in 2018. And also, by the way, if your city is not on the list, it could be because the city didn't send a complete crime report to the FBI in 2018, or also because they didn't meet the population threshold. So keep that in mind. So some of the other places that are in the top five for the safest places to live in Ohio are Sagamore Hills, Olmstead Township, Poland Township, and Rocky River. So if you live in any of those places, you can rest easy at night knowing that according to SafeWise, you are in one of the top five safest cities in the state of Ohio. Now, of course, I had to take a look at my hometown, and I am from Canton, but both North Canton and Canton are on the list, but I am solidly from Canton, not quite North Canton. North Canton came in at 64. Canton, on a list of 167, came in at 166. In Cleveland, where I currently reside, came in at 167. So obviously I am batting a thousand on the SafeWise list of safest places to live in Ohio. But I'm gonna tell you, spent a lot of time in Canton and it's a fine place to live. So Canton, don't you feel bad about that. And Cleveland is pretty great too. So uh, if you wanna check that out, we've got more of that information on WKYC.com and our WKYC app. Here is something interesting to think about, the question of whether hand sanitizer can catch your car on fire. There's a video that's a photo that's been going around social media showing the side of a car just kind of blown out from what looks like a hand sanitizer blast after it heated up. So here's 
the answer to that question? It can, but it is not very likely. Yes, hand sanitizer is very flammable, but the kind of amount of hand sanitizer you would need in order to cause that kind of a situation in your car is pretty big. We are talking like five gallons actually, which is way more than you would be keeping in your car. If you do have five gallons of hand sanitizer, it is recommended that you store that in a cabinet that's designed for flammable materials. Also, other studies have shown that the temperature a car would need to reach in order to ignite hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer is about 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, even cars in very hot weather that were tested the temperature, they got to about 160 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can check that out. You can see that photo as well on WKYC.com and our WKYC app. It is pretty interesting photo. It's a surprising sight to see, so I would recommend checking it out. Another thing I would recommend checking out is something the Cleveland Indians social media team has been up to over the past little while. They have been secretly hiding the face of actor Nicolas Cage in dozens of their team photos over the last year. So they tweeted about this on Wednesday and our Austin Love took a look at it. So that's on WKYC.com and our WKYC app. Now, this is what they said. Just want to let you know that we had Nicolas Cage in 39 of our lineup graphics last year. We snuck it by you. You didn't even notice. It is our greatest treasure. Go on a scavenger hunt if you please. We will send Master Hunters a letter of congratulations. So the photo that they shared is one of Mike Clevenger. Now I will warn you, if you go to the article on WKYC.com, it will spoil it for you. It will tell you where Nicolas Cage is hiding in that photo of Mike Clevenger. So, if you want to try your hand at it, go to the Indians profile on Twitter. It's just at Indians. Find the tweet, find Clevenger, and find yourself that Nicolas Cage photo before you take a look at the article. Also, if you want to have a little bit more fun, Austin Love decided to hide Dave Chadowski's photo in photos of the morning team from our Go show Monday through Friday and on the weekend. So check that out if you want to look for Dave Chudowski's face. You can find that on our Instagram page, which is at WKYC3, which is where we are right now. That has been your early update for 3 News Now for Friday, May 22nd. We do not have a press conference from Governor Mike DeWine today, but we will have updated numbers from the Ohio Department of Health here at 2 p.m. So I'll bring those to you as soon as we get those numbers in, and I will see you back here in a little bit. I'm Stephanie Haney.